good evening and thanks for honoring us with your presence, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the, for the state. I have two statements to make this evening. And after each statement, I will give a chance for maybe one question or clarification. Because of time, I have another engagement at 6 p.m., so I must leave here before 6. The first address <coughs> is my exit address at the end of duty as Cabinet Secretary for Interior and National Administration. As you're aware, for the last two years I've been the country's security minister and I thought I owe the people of Kenya an exit speech so that we can account for our, the two years in which by the grace of God, we have had the privilege to serve our country in that office. <clears throat> Since the 27th of October, 2022, I have had the immense privilege of serving our country as the Interior Minister. Appointment to this role was not only humbling, was not only a humbling symbol of confidence by President William Ruto, but also it thrust me into a most monumental responsibility of providing leadership to and coordinating the organs of our homeland security. For its unique complement of extensive functional control of Kenya's internal security infrastructure, the Interior Ministry has provided me with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to appreciate a little more profoundly the, the centrality of security to Kenya's primordial quest for inclusive prosperity for all its people, to appreciate the modest strides made in the past two years it is apt to revisit the state of our national security that was prevailing as at August, September 2022, when I took over. I took over this sensitive duty at Arambe House at a time when communities in northeastern Kenya and in Lamu were experiencing frequent and sustained terror attacks, marauding bandits and run amok over communities in vast, vast parts of the Northern Rift Valley region. Gang crime was at its peak in Nairobi City. The Kenyan passport production and supply system had whole but collapsed and key homeland security organs were ill-equipped and in dire need of reforms and reinvention. The end of my tour, due, my tour of duty as Kenya's Interior Minister of two years invites an introspection and reflection on the journey that I, with a loyal and patriotic support of hundreds of thousands of officers and staff, in the police, prisons, immigration, and other citizen-facing services of the ministry have traveled. I attribute any successes that were achieved in the last two years to make Kenya safer during the last two years. I attribute this success to the various ranks of officers and staff of the ministry. However, any performance inadequacies during my tenure are mine because I believe the ministry staff and officers did their best. 24 months of hard work by frontline multi-agency formations embedded deep in the forests of the Bonny Enclave has paid off with two years of calm sacrificial fighting power of elite police formations in the forward operating bases 
spread along the risky frontier areas of Liboy, Fafi, Div, Kotulo, and such like areas have resulted in two years of great victory over dangerous terrorists who would have otherwise hurt Kenya and its people. Fellow Kenyans, it has been the honor of my life not only to oversee a coordinated and policy-driven war against terrorists, but also to visit the elite police units protecting Kenya and its people at some of the most dangerous locations in our territory. Each moment, I had a chat or shared a meal or even took a selfie with security officers in the front line in the war against terror, there was always a profound surge of pride in the knowledge that a dedicated and patriotic cohort of our security forces remain alert day and night to prevent terrorists and other dangerous criminals from accessing Kenya to cause harm to its people. For, a protract for protracted periods, I have traveled by air, land, and sea to oversee counter-terrorism operations in Ziwalata, Poromoko, Kiunga, Mpeketoni, Langola Simba, and other parts of Lamu. Sometimes on Christmas Day, some other times on Good Friday, or other times covertly at night, just to make sure that we got it right. I have been to Wajia, Mandera, Takaba, and other parts of our country exposed to the threat of terror, just to give morale to frontline security officers and their commanders, and also to listen to communities in search of durable solutions against the violence of terrorist groups. Throughout the past two years, nothing has given me greater sense of fulfillment than the long days and sometimes humid nights spent in some of the farthest outposts within our territory. Therefore, fellow Kenyans, as I relinquish the leadership of the Interior Ministry, which I've already done, I am proud to report that save for a few inevitable losses, Lamu and northeastern Kenya are much safer and calmer today than the situation that prevailed in the last half of 2022. To our gallant security officers who paid the ultimate price with their limb or life to keep Kenya safe, I salute you and promise that Kenya will never forget your valor and patriotic sacrifice. May the souls of the officers who have lost their lives in the protection of our homeland and its people find perpetual rest in eternity. Equally, the memory of civilian souls lost through injury inflicted by terrorists will forever evoke our collective duty to keep Kenya free from danger, whatever its source. Fellow Kenyans, by the end of 2022, over 135 innocent Kenyans, including 20 security officers, had been killed by marauding bandits in parts of Baringo, Laikipia, Samburu, Trukana, West Pokot, and Elgeo Maraquet counties within a span of six months. During the same period, dozens of schools were closed, thousands of families were displaced, and public amenities destroyed by bandit guns, some of whom converted school classrooms into permanent dormitories for bandit families. To arrest possible breakdown of law and order, a police-led security operation with the support of the military 
was declared on 13 February 2023. It has been 19 months of sustained war on bandits in the north of our country. The, strate the strategic decision to gazette as disturbed and dangerous, remote and difficult terrain, gorges, escarpments, and caves where bandits retreated to hide after attacking, robbing, and killing innocent civilians proved to be the game changer. Heavily armed bandits were flushed out from these areas in a process that lasted several months. Their outdated gimmicks of taunting security forces and sometimes staging daylight raids were eventually crushed through intelligence-led operations, superior firepower, and efficient operational and tactical outputs that resulted in the neutralization of dangerous bandit commanders and their spiritual influencers. 19 months after President Ruto ordered the most consequential security operation against banditry ever to take place in northern Kenya, the infrastructure that had sustained banditry for over four decades has been suppressed and dismantled. Bandit gangs and their enablers have been overpowered and scattered despite occasional feeble attempts to resuscitate this dangerous crime against the people of Kenya. Scores of schools in Baringo, Samburu, Egeo Marakwe, Trukana, West Pokot, and Laikipia counties have been reopened. Mokogodo Forest, Sieku Valley, Burat Hills, Korkor, and Arabal Hills, Tandale Valley, Gelecha Valley, Malaso Escarpment, Kurkur, Pura, and other previous bandit hideouts are today pacified. As I relinquish the reins of the Interior Ministry, I am grateful to God, to the commanders and officers of various security agencies, and to the communities for their help as we look forward to sustaining the prevailing peace in these previously bandit infested areas of our country. I will forever cherish the useful input of communities profoundly represented by the under the three conversations I had with elders and residents at the foot of Arabal Hills in Baringo the Koloa Bridge at the intersection of Baringo and El Geo Maraquet counties, and in Lokori and Nadapal in Trukana County. I desire to live, to see these parts of our country completely free from the terror of bandits and opened up for socioeconomic development as Kenya marches into the future. The strides that we have made in the fight against terrorism, banditry, and other organized crimes received a shot in the arm from the Police Equipment Modernization Program, which was initiated in early 2023, following the orders of President Ruto to modernize the operational and tactical equipment of our security agencies. The 37 billion shilling five-year program is underway, with 7.6 billion shillings already spent to acquire armored personnel carriers, mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles, personal protection equipment for the police, as well as sophisticated weaponry to provide enough firepower to protect our nation. Fellow Kenyans, by September 2022, our country's infrastructure for the production and supply of Kenyan passports had 
completely collapsed owing to the breakdown of printing equipment, huge supplier debts, and chronic corruption cartels that took advantage of the situation to extort money from desperate applicants. After many months of reorganizing and financing arrangements, as well as personnel deployment at the Immigration Department, I am proud to report that as I leave the ministry, the government has been able to acquire modern printers and all the pending supplier debts have been paid. The passport production and delivery waiting period has been reduced from more than 12 months in 2022 to seven days at present. The backlog of 724,000 passports has been cleared and the challenge now is to expedite the delivery process to clear the 85,000 uncollected passports that are ready. As I leave the reins of the ministry, I am proud to report that the corruption cartels of staff and members of the public that used to harass passport applicants have been dismantled and 17 ring leaders including immigration officers, are facing ongoing criminal prosecution. As I exit, I am convinced beyond doubt that the milestone of reducing the waiting period from the current seven days to three days by the close of this year remain feasible. In the days ahead, we must confront and succeed in reforming the institutions of our national security. At the orders of President Ruto, and in compliance with the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, the process of reimagining and refashioning Kenya's security institutions began in earnest on 21st December 2022, when the Presidential Task Force on Reforms or of the National Police Service, the Kenya Prison Service, and the National Youth Service was established. While the work of the task force took longer than expected due to the expansive terms of reference, its final report has already been presented to the president. And one of the last actions I took before I left the ministry was to gazette the National Steering Committee under the leadership of the Principal Secretary for Internal Security, with a mandate to ensure full recommendation, full uh, uh, realization and implementation of the groundbreaking proposals for reforming our police, prisons, and youth services to align them with the dictates of our progressive 2010 constitution and the vision of underwriting the national ideal of securing Kenya from long-term internal and external security threats. Fellow Kenyans, throughout my tenure of, in office, I have benefited from direct support and encouragement of President Ruto. I thank him for giving me the privilege to serve my country as the Interior Minister for an uninterrupted an two years. I am most grateful to the principal secretaries and officers of all ranks within the state departments and other agencies that fall under the Ministry of Interior for great teamwork, support, and encouragement. To our security officers, especially those assigned the sensitive duty of protecting the country from terror, banditry, and other organized crimes, I salute you all for your selfless and patriotic service to our country. I send warm greetings and best wishes to all officers, especially those in, in far-flung forward operating bases. Our officers in the multinational security support mission in Haiti, as well as the ranks of the National Government Administration officer system, the Ngao system, with whom I have developed close and cordial working relationships 
during the past two years. I pray that my successor will build on the gains we made and will succeed to roll back the emerging reports of mysterious disappearances, abductions, and femicide. Goodbye, and God bless Kenya, and protect our dear country, our homeland, the Republic of Kenya. May we remain one nation of one people, united by our emblems, the map, the flag, and the national anthem of Kenya. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eric Owenga, Labda kwa Kiswahili, Bwana Naibu Rais. What do you speak of uh, about your legacy in terms of abductions and uh, extrajudicial killings that were rampant during your uh, reign as the Cabinet Secretary of Interior for the past two years? Because Kenyans, some of the questions have not been answered in regard to the same. Can you exhaustively speak about it? Thank you. Yes, as you have, uh, thank you very much for that uh, concern. As, you, as I have said towards the last part of my statement, I have demonstrated how for two years, every day of my life, I have struggled to secure the country from crime and from people who would have caused us uh, harm. And I have uh, told my journey, the places I've been and what has, uh, took me there the work I did in immigration and other places. At the end of my statement, I have said, as I exit that office, I'm exiting at a time when there are reports of cases of mysterious disappearances, abductions, and femicide. And I have handed over the responsibility of cracking down on those emerging reports of crime. And I wish him well, and I know he will succeed the same way in the past, I've been able to handle uh, uh, those other national security challenges. Remember, these are challenges that we've witnessed in the last few months, and um, already we had gotten ourselves on a place where we had uh, come up with uh, a strategy of cracking down on this uh, criminal uh, behavior. The same way we succeeded, even with the Nairobi urban crime, which was quite a spiral at the time we took over and which today uh, is manageable. And therefore, uh, these are uh, developments over the last few weeks, uh, maybe a couple of months. We had laid the ground on how to deal with both um, uh, cracking down on criminals who are in that space of uh, femicide or uh, abducting people and also a framework for accountability of any rogue officer or officers who will be involved. And therefore, that should be the task of the next minister going forward. I have no doubt I have done my best every day of my life, and there is no day I have slept uh, without asking myself what I have done to make our country safer. Before, uh, uh, because of time, allow me now to transit and um, uh, speak on my assumption of office to the 